Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. This is a part two of my empty series. So if you haven't watched the first part of this video, then go ahead and watch that. The second part is all about my skincare and my makeup. Let's start with this. My Loving Tan Deluxe Bronzing Mousse in Ultra Dark. Oh, love this. I understand what all the fuss is about online. It's really nice. It's just quite pricey as tanning mousses go. Like you can buy much cheaper tanning mousses from Priceline. This is like $50 I'm pretty sure. And honestly it's 120 mils. So you go through it and like I'm going to say between like three and four uses. You're pretty much done with the whole bottle. In saying that though I barely ever tan. Like I used to be the queen of fake tanning and like memories from high school when I used to use like the dove tan remember that guys <laughs> but I just used it on my legs so I still had a completely white body and white arms and a white face but you know if I had tan legs everything was fine right this is the body shop Shea body butter it's a mini one mm, it's very nice I'm so lazy with moisturizing my legs but if I ever feel the need to moisturize my legs arms chest and all that kind of stuff this is very, very nice. I tend to alternate between like a small body shop one that isn't too heavily fragranced. This one is just like a fragrance that is okay. It doesn't make my legs get all itchy and red and spotty or anything. Or just the Aveeno one, which doesn't have any fragrance. Here we go. Two sunscreens here. The first one is the Mecca Cosmetica Super Spray SPF 50. I got through half of this and then I just didn't like it I don't think I gave up on it it's an oily texture not great not my favorite to be honest and you know we all know that sun care is incredibly important but I wouldn't rate this highly in my personal experience the next one I have here is the Amate ultra veil ultra light sunscreen fluid broad spectrum SPF 50 now I had a terrible outbreak of like really sensitive skin probably two years ago now or maybe 18 months or something like that and my skin was not handling anything but I obviously needed a sunscreen and I was doing so much research to figure out what the best kind of sunscreen was for sensitive skin and I found this online it didn't have that many reviews but all the reviews that were about it were really good it was bloody expensive it is a Korean brand yes made in Korea but it's just, I think I bought it from America or something like that. Unfortunately though, the YouTuber that I mentioned before, Stephanie Nicole, did a whole entire video on sunscreens and the best sunscreens for your skin and the ingredients in them. And this has an ingredient in which it may affect your hormones and your estrogen levels or something like that, which sounds really freaky. And in Stephanie's words, it was like, stay the hell away from that kind of an ingredient. So I did finish this. And now I'm sort of at this square one with just trying to find the best kind of sunscreen. When I was watching her video, however, I wasn't sure how much of it applied to me because obviously the UV levels are very different in different countries. And because I live here in Sydney, Australia in the summer, I think the sun is a lot more harsh. I think she lives in San Francisco. So like I took it with a grain of salt, but like the important thing was there are ingredients out there that can mess with your hormones. So any suggestions, please leave them down below. Moving on. I have an empty bump eraser, no more ingrowns Medi Paste. This is from Priceline for ingrown hairs. I really liked it. It was like a good holy grail of mine for a long time, but I've actually ended up finding that coconut oil is really good so i don't have any complaints with coconut oil it's a bit cheaper this is like 14 dollars i think for a tiny little bottle like this so yeah i've got some lip stuff this is the lush popcorn lip scrub i am getting rid of this because it expired in september of 2017 <laughs> it is a beautiful smelling uh, product but that's my issue with lush cosmetics is that they do expire really quickly and I cannot get through 25 grams of lip scrub. Like I have barely touched this. These here, this is very loved. It's like all of it's rubbed off basically, but these are Haroo lip balms. I, I found them on iHerb. I pretty much have all the flavors that you could imagine, but it's funny how much I really don't <laughs> use them. These two I really liked. This one here is lemon and this one is 
lime. And I've still got a bit, of, a bit left in that, but it was just getting a bit cruddy to the point where I was like, nah, I'm not going to use it anymore. And the last thing I have for lip care is the Lucas Pawpaw Ointment. I was really proud of myself for getting through this. It took me forever. I only really use this on top of other lip cares because it's not a moisturizing, it's more of a barrier thing like a petroleum jelly, but I still like it anyway. So yeah, I'm really happy that I got through this whole tube. Continuing on with skincare, I have two Clarisonic brush heads here. This one is the I think it's the delicate. Anyway, this one is a little bit harsher than this one. This is a cashmere soft brush. This is beautiful on sensitive skin, really soft. When I first started using it and I'd come off the slightly harsher brush, I was like, is this even doing anything? But yes, it does. It's just in a much softer way. I really do like this though. So I alternate between both. I do one for three months next one for three months, one for three months. So my skin kind of constantly doesn't get used to like, especially this cashmere brush because it is so delicate. I wouldn't want my skin to build up a resistance to it. So that's why I like kind of changing it up to a, this is still really soft, but a slightly harsher brush than the other one. And it just kind of keeps my skin integrity up. So I really like these. And I, yeah, as I said, I always alternate between the two types. So these are two Lush products here. They're two empty Lush products. This is the Angels on Bare Skin. I've had this for so long and I think it just sort of popped up out of nowhere or I didn't throw it out a long time ago. Yeah, I've had this for a really long time. I'm pretty sure it expired in, yes, it expired in January of 2017. So I haven't used it in a really long time because I pretty much don't use any of my Lush products anymore. The only one I do tend to use, and it's only sometimes, is my Outfix Fresh Face Mask. Cleanse, soften, and moisturize dry sensitive skin. It's really nice. It's almost like a porridge on your face. I keep it in the fridge. I have two Glam Glow mini face masks. One is the Power Mind Dual Cleansing Treatment. So this was from, I'm pretty sure this goes to oil, a mud to oil or something like that. And this one here is the Glam Glow Youth Mud Tingle Exfoliate Treatment Mask. Blah, 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 blah. Only thing is, these two little little products oh my god look at this this is a dried up piece of the mask the whole thing is completely dried up and the same with the um the youth mud as well i'm really peeved about that because i spent a lot of money and i probably got one or maybe even two uses out of them they're probably not the best for my skin type but obviously, you know, Glam Glow is such a hyped product that I really wanted to try it and thought that even if I had these over time, I could still use them as spot treatments or just once every so often. But now I can't because they're all dried up. So not happy about that. The only one that I like out of the Glam Glow is the hydrating one, which smells like coconuts, which is really nice. And that one isn't a mud treatment formula or anything. So it's like it won't ever dry up on me, but what the heck? I wonder if this has happened to any of you. Please tell me down below if it has, because I'm really disappointed. That's a lot of money down the drain, just because they dried up. Moving on, I have my beloved Clinique Take the Day Off Balm. This is awesome. It's a really big tub, a perfect way to, to take off your makeup. Dual cleansing is so important, and it's really changed my skincare routine as well. So yeah, I'm really happy about this. Now, <laughs> this is so funny. It's like cut in half. I used every last drop of this cleanser because it got discontinued and it's really sad because it was amazing and like a perfect cleanse for me. It was the nude perfect cleanse omega jelly cleanser. Oh, it's so sad that it was discontinued because it was perfect. And before that product, I had the Kate Somerville Goat's Milk Cleanser, which was also amazing, perfect for sensitive skin. And that got discontinued as well. So the one that I'm really keen to try is the Glossier Milk Jelly Cleanser because the, it's the same consistency as this one and the last one. Glossier is quite hard to get in Australia, so I just need to do my research and try and find it online. Next up, we have two sample sized Chantical, oh my god, sorry if I butchered that name, rice and geranium foaming cleanser. Now, I'm not a fan of foaming cleansers, but this was more of a physical exfoliator, but very, very gentle. 
and I really liked them actually. I think I've still got a little bit left in my bathroom in just like a um, travel container and I don't think I'd buy this specifically but I'm glad I had it to try it out. It doesn't dry out my skin at all. Yeah, I'd recommend these. And my last two things here for my eye makeup removers are the Etude House One Shot Clean Mascara Remover. So these like an oil remover for your mascara and holy moly these are amazing i found this at a shopping center plaza close to where i live and it was like three or four dollars i was like sweet that's cheap and it was amazing i'm so glad that i found it then i found this on a website online and i mean the bigger size is obviously better yeah really really good and i've got another backup ready and waiting for me once i finish another product that's similar to this but a lot more expensive but I think I'll be sticking to this from now on so I've got two toners here I've got the simple kind of skin soothing facial toner this is good if I'm ever having like skin issues or I don't feel like I need any sort of chemical exfoliants on my face or whatever I'm still sort of new to this whole chemical exfoliant process and I don't think, yeah, like I don't want to use it all the time at the moment because my skin, as I said, is getting used to it. But this here is awesome. This is the Pixi Glow Tonic Glycolic Acid. And I really liked this. I know that there is a bigger size available out there as well. Here we've got a product from The Ordinary, the Hyaluronic Acid 2% plus B5. B5, I'm assuming that's a vitamin, but... I'm not sure. Anyway, I bought this for the hyaluronic acid. Obviously, hyaluronic acid has super moisturizing properties. Um, I was having issues with really, really dry skin under my eyes when I did makeup application. So this is like, ah, uh, it's amazing. This is a Trilogy certified organic rosehip oil. I sometimes use this on my lips or very lightly on my face. I used to be like the biggest fan of putting oils on my face and oh my gosh back in the day I used to love putting oil on my face. Like I did used to put the dreaded coconut oil on my face like rookie mistake but that was before we sort of all knew that it was a comedogenic and it blocked your pores and everything. So yeah I, I don't really use it on my face. I tend to use this just for lips. I would repurchase. Here I have the Aveen serum, hydrating serum and it is just like again extra moisture into your skin. Doesn't have any like glycolic acid in it, or hyaluronic acid in it. It is just moisturizing AF. Oh okay I can start with these three here because they're all the same and they're from Aveen. They are the skin recovery cream. Yep that's it skin recovery cream. Used to love this for ages until I just figured out that one of the ingredients in it is mineral oil. Mineral oil is just like a really cheap product to put in skincare so it doesn't really do anything for your skin. It's not really beneficial. So unfortunately I won't be purchasing these anymore even though I really did love it. Also I hated the packaging because look at this. <laughs> I used to squeeze it out so hard and the packaging goes all funny. So yeah, Aveen get onto that with changing the packaging. <laughs> Aveen Restorative Skin Creams. I have two of them. Again, packaging, this is probably better than that one, but still like, I mean, you, you're ending up with a pretty munted product by the end of it. I have a large version of this at the moment. It's like 100 mils. Again, though, that has mineral oil in it as well. I'm going to continue to keep using it at the moment. It's not doing any harm to my skin, so... I'll just keep using it up because obviously I've paid for it and I don't see the point in just throwing things out. Let's move on to three little ones. Dr. Jart, amazing from Sephora and I've only ever had the chance to use little products from them but I am going to save my little pennies and buy the full size versions. So the first one here that I have is the Sycopeer Derma Green Cure Solution, a rest and cure solution for irritated skin. I went through these so quickly. I think these were a gift or like a thing that I could get as a gift from purchasing things from Sephora. So I could probably like keep going back and getting these if I buy things there, but I do just want to buy the full size one. The Ceramide and Cream is, again, it's a, 
it's a favorite of people who are skincare lovers fantastic for sensitive skin but the large size is like 71 dollars like it's expensive the last two products i have here is philosophy take a deep breath oil free oxygenating gel cream this is a great moisturizer it has hyaluronic acid in it but obviously when you open it up like this the properties of that acid kind of tend to disappear a little bit opening it up exposing it to oxygen and air like that it kind of just doesn't really it's a, it's a good moisturizer and you don't really get too many other benefits from it i have the small version of the youth to the people kale spinach and green tea hyaluronic acid this is awesome i like this probably over the philosophy moisturizer so i bought the full size version which i am not using at the moment but will be using very soon in my collection really really liked this it's that whole green beauty movement that a lot of people are on board with and i'm not like fully endorsed in it but i do enjoy a lot of products from the green beauty trend i have two mario badescu facial sprays with aloe herbs and rose water this is just something i like to put on my skin if i'm at home and have just put a moisturizer on it it's just nice and refreshing especially when it's hot i mean we are coming out of warmer weather now so i don't tend to you know use this to cool down but usually at the end of the night i'll use either one of these or one of my pixie sprays uh, or sprays from the brand pixie i like my pixie sprays over this but i'm always going to have this because it's so cheap and it is just really easy to use and spray on and my skin likes it this is the simple kind to skin cleansing facial wipes i use these when i'm really lazy and i don't like to double cleanse even if i just have a little bit of makeup on i'll i'll use these over actually doing like a full double cleanse like hardcore wash they're really good and i've never had any problems with them and i've gone through way more than one packet i just didn't want to be a hoarder and keep so many packets and the last one is the the acne pimple master patch now i am very lucky i do not have acne but i sometimes get the occasional pimple so i've always tried things like the drying lotion from mario badesco which i currently have in my collection which i sometimes use but really honestly these have taken over for sure they literally suck the gunk out of your face it is amazing <laughs> i cannot believe that this hasn't been more popular sooner they're almost like stickers that you put on top of pimples or whatever and it literally just sucks the gunk out and in the morning you take them off and you pretty much don't have anything left so i bought more of these for when i get the old pimple and i oh, thumbs up from me i love them seriously if you have anything to buy from skincare today from all the things that i've shown you these things i highly recommend and they're cheap too moving on to makeup because my camera is dying we've got two of my empty my favorite foundations which i'm actually wearing today this is the nars mont blanc light 2 sheer glow sheer glow is the best it's my og i have so many foundations these days that i always like you know it's kind of like there but i don't tend to like always use it so it's it's good i'm glad i picked it up today and used it because it just looks so beautiful on the skin oh my god i don't even know i kept this. this is the grossest looking beauty blender it is disgusting i can't even look at it beauty blenders you go through them you can't obviously keep beauty blenders for a very very long amount of time so obviously i threw this one out this is the i can't even look at it because it's so disgusting it is the real techniques complexion sponge they're fantastic i don't like the beauty blenders the original ones so these are an alternative oh my gosh so these are sample pots of the fenty foundation now obviously you know there was a big craze over the new fenty foundation that came out but you often find online that people either love it it's their favorite new foundation or they absolutely hate it and i absolutely hated it it made my skin look so dry i looked about 85 years old wearing it i've got lots of sample pots now sample pots are a fantastic way of trying out foundations because obviously committing to a foundation can be a bit of a process to be honest like you don't want to be buying a 60 70 dollar product to just not like it you know so i always suggest people just you know build up that confidence and go up to a, an employee at mecca or sephora wherever you're going even david jones pretty sure or maya or something ask for samples because that is a fantastic way to figure out 
what works well for your skin and what doesn't. Mecca employees, I have to say, Sephora and Mecca employees tend to be a lot more generous with their samples. Sephora, not so much. Here I've got the Too Faced Born This Way in the shade Snow. They finally came out with some lighter shades. I liked this and I bought it. The Urban Decay Naked Foundation, Naked Skin in 0.5. I didn't like this, so I didn't buy it. So Sephora like went through this period, like the Sephora in the city in Sydney, went through this period where they didn't have any sample pots. And so no one could get a sample of anything. And I was just like, you know, like really annoyed. So I went into Mecca and I batted my pretty little eyelashes and I was like, you know, like I really want to try this foundation out, but it's Sephora and I needed it, you know, a sample pot and they were so nice. I'm like, no, don't worry about it, it's fine. So I went into Sephora with the Mecca logo sample pot and I was like, can I uh, get a sample of this? And they were a bit confused, but I mean, they did it for me, which was fantastic. I got the Kat Von D Locket Tattoo, was it Locket Tattoo? Lo Locket Foundations um, in 44 and 43 and ended up buying the 44 and I also bought the 42 as well for when I'm really pale in the winter. 43 was a bit yellow toned for me. I have the Stila All Day Porcelain Zero Shade and then I've also got the Stila Stay All Day in Bear Number One. I chose number zero, number zero. I chose the porcelain shade because it suited my skin more than the shade number one. The Hour Glass Mineral Veil Primer. Really like this. Beautiful. I bought a small size of it afterwards. And these two here are the Hour Glass Vanish. Oh, the stick foundation. I have never gotten on with foundation sticks and this was no exception. They like got a little piece off for me, but it just didn't work. I did not like it. And the same with the Cover Effects. Oh no, it was the Compact. The Cover Effects Compact. I actually ended up buying this, which I really like, but it's like a compact for when I'm really, really pale. But in the winter, it's really good for like little touch ups here and there. Getting through this, guys. If you are still watching, I am very impressed. The MAC Mini Prep and Prime Fix Plus Spray. Nothing extraordinary about this to be honest and I probably wouldn't purchase it again there are a lot better sort of priming sprays or setting sprays out there uh, in my opinion Inica organic certified organic pure primer with hyaluronic acid I got that from another Adore Adore Beauty online I have really good like they do give you all the samples so this I really liked I don't think I would go out and buy it but I did really enjoy it while I was using it Too Faced Hangover X replenishing face primer really nice it's the Maybelline fit me concealer in the shade 15 fair the shade 10 is actually darker than the shade 15 this is way better for uh, rosy undertones pink undertones and everything so I really like these they've actually come out with a even fairer shade than that. I think it's number five but it's not in Australia yet so I'm waiting patiently for it to come here otherwise I might just have to find it online and buy it. I've got the Cover Effects Custom Cover Drops in N10. I liked these but I don't think I'd purchase them again. They were good to sort of like make my foundations more full coverage but I have so many full coverage foundations now it just kind of became a little bit pointless and plus it ran out really quickly. It's only 15 mils but I feel like it ran out even quicker than that and this dropper was literally crap like I'm pretty sure there's a lot more product in there but because it didn't reach all the way down to the bottom it was not great to use. Brow products here and we have the Colourpop wow this is all rubbed off the Colourpop Arched Auburn I'm pretty sure yes it's the Arched Auburn eyebrow pencil this is a really good color for me I have gone on a journey to find good colors for my eyebrows I got them microbladed by the lovely Amy Jean from Amy Jean I Couture last April so I basically just stuck to the very very similar color to that because it was like the perfect color when I got my eyebrows microbladed by Amy Jean last year, she gave me a prototype of one of her products that she is bringing out very soon. Um, it was in the shade 9 and it was literally the most perfect color I have ever tried on my eyebrows ever. And for a redhead, that is a massive deal. I messaged her on Instagram and I was like, um, do you still have any of those? Like, uh, are they coming out anytime soon? And she was like, oh yeah, yeah, they're coming out. But I mean... 
that was a long time ago so hopefully they do come out at some point this year because oh my god now i've got a bunch of mascaras here i've got the benefit roller lash my favorite mascara in the whole wide world is uh, along with the maybelline lash sensational i love this as a drugstore option it's really good and then also the wet n wild lash renegade mascara so all three of these i just i love them and then i've got a mini bare minerals lash domination volumizing mascara I don't remember where I got this, probably from an online order because I mean I online order all the time. So yeah, I really liked this too, but I don't remember if it was life changing. Like I definitely wouldn't go out and buy an, um, a full size product of this. Oh my gosh, this is all over the place. I'm so sorry. At least it's all kind of under the same category like makeup though. So it's fine, right? This is my Physician's Formula Mineral Glow Translucent Powder. It is so pretty as a really fair person having a powder that actually matches your skin tone has been something that i've been struggling to find for a long time without making my skin look really cakey but this is really pretty and i've i've already i'm already going straight through a second one at the moment i probably need to buy a third one and i've had more before this one as well whoops I've had more before this one as well so yeah really nice when you go through powders sometimes you tend to get like right to the bottom when you like hit pan and then it starts breaking off in pieces that didn't happen with this this was really good three lip products here there is my hair everywhere what's going on this one is then actually an empty product this is the rimmel london rimmel london lipstick in the color 77 or 077 asia i have been through this lipstick this is my third tube of it it is a perfect color it's drugstore it's really nice if i was had to wear makeup for work like every day like this is like just a standard lipstick that i would wear instead of like my really fancy and expensive lipsticks two other lip products that i have here oh my gosh this one is so tragic because it literally is my favorite favorite lipstick of all time the formula is amazing and i have a bunch of different shades in it it's the nars audacious lipstick this one is in the shade anna and it's really sad because this is actually the second tube i've had out of three i think the first one that i had yeah i think i lost that one on a night out yeah no that was my own fault but this one for some reason i must have dropped it again it's probably my own fault as well but i dropped it and it now doesn't close properly uh obviously like it's a magnetic lid so yeah it really just did not work out for me and i can't keep traveling with this because it just comes off like there's still heaps of product left but i just uh, had to buy another one which was really annoying because they're really expensive and this one here is the wet n wild mega slicks balm stain in the color made you pink now i have this beautiful like it's almost like a tinted lip not tinted it's just like a sheer lip product that gives a bit of color to my lips if i don't feel like wearing a full-on lipstick during the day um if i'm just wearing light makeup i bought that in london when i traveled there 18 months ago and it was the brand kiko and when i get kiko here and they don't have that product anymore i've tried looking online and it just it's nowhere unfortunately so i bought this as like a replacement for that thinking oh yeah it's gonna be good but it sucks like it just comes out with all the wrinkles on your lips and like it made my lips look really dry guys we're getting to the end of it i've got a couple of products left i've got three setting sprays here i have the wet n wild photo focus setting spray and i actually just finished this today which is awesome um it it was fine i wouldn't purchase it again i think it must have been like a new product when i had bought it if you want to try a cheap setting spray this one's pretty good this is one of my favorite drugstore setting sprays it's the nyx dewy finish spray it makes my skin just oh it's really hydrating and obviously it gives me a bit of a dewy nice finish and then the last one i have is the skindinavia makeup finishing spray i bought this on beautylish I really want to try the Scandinavia brand. Obviously, the Urban Decay, like All Nighter, the uh, Slick, and the Chill setting sprays are a parent company from Scandinavia, I'm pretty sure. Or like they're a company below Scandinavia. So I had never tried the Scandinavia ones. They've been around for a long time and I really liked it. And I purchased another small size of it. Actually, I think there's still some in there. Let's see. Hmm.
No. Oh no. Oh no. Just fan it off. <laughs> and yeah. Oh my gosh. That's it. What an absolute mission and a half this was. I All I wanted to do this whole week was film. You know, I'm just like, wow. I give a lot of respect to YouTubers who do this all the time. Uh, my camera is flashing and it's dying, so I have to wrap this on up. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please remember to click like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below with what you want to see next. See ya.